What's going on YouTube? If you are a volume photographer, you take pictures of kids, dance, schools, sports. Today I'm going to show you how this QR code can save you hours of time. As a volume photographer, and that is someone who takes a picture of groups of people like sports, schools, groups of kids, the most important thing you have to do is one, make a great photograph, and two, keep track of the kids' names. You have to know which kid goes with which file. Now, there are a couple ways to do this. Now, back when I started with sports, I used to write the kid's name on a dry erase board, hold it up in front of the camera, take its picture, and then take the picture of the kid. Then I would bring all the files into Lightroom, get the first picture with the kid's name, and manually rename all the files to the kid's name. The problem with that was it took forever to do, and I made a lot of typos, especially in today's world where kids spell Bob QST91F. The big thing you wanna do is avoid having to manually type everyone's name, and that's where QR codes come into play. A QR code is just a barcode that contains all sorts of information. It can encode anything you want. It's file names, phone numbers, website addresses. You've probably seen these on the sides of boxes of food and wondered what they were for. Well, try this. Take out your smartphone, put it on the camera app, and aim it at that QR code. And what does it say? You should have a message on your phone now that was encoded in this QR code. Now this is exactly what we're gonna do for our volume photography. We're gonna make a QR code for each kid. Everybody's name is gonna be encoded into a QR code. We're gonna photograph the QR code, read it in Lightroom, and then have Lightroom rename all of the files for us. Now how much is all this gonna cost? It's actually free. I made a template for you, it's in the description below, that is a Google Sheets template. Google Sheets is a free web-based application and I'm gonna show you how to use it. If you click the link in the description of this video, it will bring you to this page. It looks like a very simple spreadsheet and if you click on it, it won't let you do anything because it's sort of a template preview. What you need to do is on the right, click Use Template. If you click on it, it will then open the spreadsheet in Google Sheets. Now, Google Sheets requires a Google account to use. Google accounts are free to set up. It may ask you to log in. Once you're logged in, your screen should look like this. Now, if I click this green button, it will bring me back to all of my Google Sheets. I'm gonna select my new QR template and it will open like this. Now, here's basically how it works. Anything I type in column A, is gonna be turned into a small QR code in column B. So if I type in the name Ted and hit enter, you will see in column B is the QR code that would spell out Ted. Now it's very small, so your phone isn't gonna be able to see it just yet. However, we will get to that. If you click on column B, you can see the code that was required to generate the QR code. Basically, it goes out on the web, goes to this address, returns a 400 by 400 QR code, and places it in the box. If you delete these columns, it will delete the script required to get the QR code. So I wouldn't touch anything over in column B. Column A is where you're gonna add all of your information. Now, there is one catch to using Google Sheets that is a little bit of a pain, and that's you cannot use any spaces. As soon as I add a space, for example, if I typed Ted Smith and hit return, my QR code will vanish. So what we need to do is use an underscore where we would use a space. And now that pops right up. So let's type in another name. We'll type Smith comma Joe. Hit enter and there it is. So the first thing we're gonna to need to get before we can actually use this on a photo shoot is a list of student names. Now I've got a list of fake names and I'm going to 
click on the top A and it will highlight everything. I'm gonna hit Command or Control C to copy it. Now I'm gonna click on the green icon and come back to my home base and then click on my QR template. I'm gonna come onto column A2 and hit paste. Now what it's done is pasted all of the names that the teacher sent me and I've now got them in my spreadsheet. However, we don't see any QR codes and that's because we can't have spaces. So how are we gonna get rid of those spaces? It's actually really easy. Under edit, select find and replace. Under find, I'm going to hit the space bar one time and I'm gonna replace that with the underscore. Then I'll hit replace all now I'll hit done and look what happened. All of our column B's are now filled in with QR codes. Now this sheet is called sheet one. What we wanna do is search using the filter and this is our next sheet. It looks complex, but it's really easy to do. All we need to do is in column A2, where it says enters values to search, we're gonna type in a name. So I know there's somebody named Cameron in our list, so I'm just gonna type C-A-M and hit enter. Now it picked out Victoria Cameron, Cameron Degnan, and Cameron Hurst. Which Cameron do we want? Well, if we want Victoria Cameron, we're set. There's nothing else we have to do. If we want one of these other kids, we may need to retype it just like it appears below. And there we go. This is the QR code that will represent this name. So if we take a picture of this QR code, then our computer will be able to turn it into text that we can then use to rename our files in Lightroom. Now, before we start taking pictures, we need to synchronize the time on our mobile device that's gonna show the QR code and the time on our camera. And there's a really easy way to do it. On your device or on your computer, go to worldclock.com. Now take your camera and take a picture of this time. That way, no matter what time your camera is set to, we know exactly what time it really was when you took the picture. We can then tell Lightroom to adjust all of your camera's pictures so they reflect the accurate time. Now time is important to do because when we're in Lightroom, before we rename everything, we need to have all of the images in chronological order. So for example, this picture I screenshotted on my iPad, then I took the photos. Then the next kid came, I typed in his information, screenshotted this on my iPad, and then took his photos. And the next kid came. I took the screenshot of his name and then took his photos with my camera. Screenshot with the iPad, then photos. If you get a good picture of the world clock with your camera, then we can put everything in chronological order. We can sort our photos by capture time and then we're ready to rename. Well, it's finally picture day. Let's go photograph a girls basketball team that has five members. We're trying to keep it simple for our first time. Let's go take their pictures using the QR codes and I'll show you how this works. Here's our database, we're ready to go. All five girls' names are typed into the database and their corresponding QR codes are showing, so everything is working. This can be viewed on an iPad or an iPhone or Android phone as well. Now we're ready to take some pictures. So the first girl comes up and we ask her her name and her name is Laura. So I'm gonna just type in Laura hit return, Laura's name pops up in the yellow box and here's her QR code. So I'm going to now do a screen capture. Now I'm ready to take her photo. Our next student comes up, we ask her her name and her name is Linda. So we're gonna type in Linda. Her QR code pops up. I'm gonna do a screen capture to capture her QR code. Now on a mobile device, you also do a screen capture and it saves to your photo roll. Then you'll take the photos from your mobile device and put them into your computer. 
Our next student is Martha, so we'll type her name there. There's her QR code. Do a screenshot, now I'm ready to take Martha's photo. Our next student is Sarah. And our last student is Elizabeth. Back at the studio after our long day of shooting and I like to put all of the files in one folder. All of the pictures that I took on my camera and all of the screen captures all in one folder. If you're using an Apple product, you can use AirDrop to transfer all of your screenshots from your phone or your iPad to your computer. Now let's open these in Lightroom. Here are all our files in Lightroom, all of the QR code screen captures, and all of the pictures that we took. Now I know this video has been a little complex, but it's all downhill from here. Once you do this once or twice, you'll be so glad you learned how to do this. The first thing we need to do is set the correct time on the pictures we took with our real camera. You can see that the pictures aren't in order. All the QR codes are grouped together and all the camera pictures are grouped together and that is because the camera was set to the wrong time. Here's the first picture I took that day of the clock, the worldclock.com on my iPad so that I knew what the actual time was. Now, 11.40 and 31 seconds, I need to go back into grid view, select all of the pictures I took with my camera, select metadata and come down to edit capture time. And I'm going to type in the correct time. Now I'm going to hit change all. And what it's gonna do is change the capture time of all the pictures so that it's correct. Now I'm gonna show you how you can download a free plugin that will rename your files in Lightroom based on the data in the QR code. So you're gonna to go to capturemonkey.com, click on metadata and select Lightroom barcodes. Lightroom barcodes is the name of the plugin and it's totally free. This plugin is not pretty. It's not often updated. In fact, I think the last update was several years ago However, it continues to work flawlessly through multiple versions of Lightroom. So click download and follow the directions to install it into Lightroom. Back in Lightroom, we've got our plugin installed and now we're ready to rename the files. So the first step of the plugin is to run what's called the barcode detection. It's gonna go through all of the files and detect all of the barcodes. So under File, select Plugin Extras, then select Run Barcode Detection. And it may ask for permission to write to your catalog. Simply hit Proceed. Now right now it's going through the catalog looking for the barcodes and it's telling us that it found five barcodes. Now we hit OK. Now we have to tell the computer what to do with that information that it found. In the library module under metadata, you can see that each file has multiple spaces to add metadata. For example, caption, title. We're gonna use the copy name. What we're gonna do is have Lightroom take the text it found in the QR code and copy it into each file's copy name field. So I'm going to hit File, Plugin Extras, Metadata Propagation. Now that sounds like a scary word, but it's really not. In our next window that pops up, we have to tell Lightroom what we want the source to be. The source is our barcode content, meaning the name of the player. And we want to put it in the destination field copy name. It's telling us we have 17 photos and five barcodes. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now, if we click on a single player and we look in the copy name, Laura Smith, we can see her name. Now we need to rename the files using the copy name to make a new file name. So we're going to select all of our files, 
we're gonna hit F2 and we're gonna rename 17 photos. Now let's make a preset so that we can easily do this next time. Instead of custom text here, I wanna start my file name with the copy name. So I'm going to insert the copy name and then a four digit sequence number. That way, if there are multiple photos of Laura Smith, one will be named Laura Smith one, one will be named Laura Smith two. I'm gonna hit done. And now we've created a preset so that the next time we have to rename the files, we don't have to do that. We simply hit okay. And all of our files are renamed. I'm gonna run through that one more time just to show you how quickly you can rename all your files once you have a hang of this. Now, everything is in order, everything is in chronological order. The QR codes are in the right spot. I'm gonna hit Command A or Control A to select all. Then under File, go down to Plugin Extras. I'm gonna select Run Barcode Detection. I'll hit Proceed. It tells us it found five barcodes. Now I'm going to come down to Plugin Extras and Run Metadata Propagation. It kept the settings from last time. I'm gonna copy the barcode content into the copy name. Hit OK, it's done. Now I'll hit F2, and I've already set up a preset that's gonna rename the files using their copy name and a four-digit number, and I'm done. Now imagine renaming a sports league with a thousand kids in it. You may end up with 5,000 pictures on your computer. It would take days to rename them manually by hand, typing in each kid's name. This way saves you tons of time and guarantees spelling accuracy. As long as the team gave you the correct spelling, you'll have it exactly as it should be spelled. And that's really important, especially when you use green screen and you use a template that might have the kid's name in it. Nobody's gonna wanna buy a picture with their kid's name spelled incorrectly. Let's review everything we did today. Step one is to get a list of the names of the kids or people that you'll be photographing. Insist that the spelling be correct, and if possible, make sure that it's typed so you can simply copy and paste it into your QR code creator of choice. Now, I provided you with a free QR creation system used in Google Sheets. However, there are other methods. There are apps on the Android and Apple platform that will create QR codes for you. Most of these apps aren't free, but cost very little. Step three is to take a photo of the QR code, then take a photo of your subject. Now in our examples, we used a screenshot to take a photo of the QR code, and then our cameras to take a photo of the subject. You could use your camera to take a picture of a QR code. However, if you're outside shooting in the sun, your iPad or mobile device might not be bright enough. You could also print QR codes on paper, photograph the paper, then photograph the kids. Step four is to import all of your photos into Lightroom and run barcode detection. Step five is to run metadata propagation. Remember, that's the second part of the Capture Monkey plugin. What that does is it takes the data found in the QR code and copies it into the copy name field of each photo. Step six is to rename your photos. Remember when you rename to press F2 and create a preset that will allow Lightroom to use the copy name followed by a four digit sequence number. Now this is a new channel for me in 2020. If you've learned anything cool, please do me a favor, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. If you have questions, leave a comment below and I will be happy to answer them. I hope you've learned something today that will save you hours of time. Happy shooting.